13 things you probably didn't learn in sex ed, but definitely need to know. Glossing over sex ed isn't good for anyone. Let's be real, the amount of actual ed in sex ed classes can be pretty sketchy. Some schools don't even have formal sexual education, and others teach an abstinence-only curriculum that skips over info about birth control methods and STI protection, which isn't exactly helpful. In fact, research has shown that teens who get comprehensive sexual education, with all the nitty-gritty details, actually had a significantly lower risk of pregnancy than those who didn't. The more informed you are, the more likely you'll make smart decisions, so if your school sex ed program is seriously lacking, you'll probably need to fill in the gaps. It's really important for teens to take control of their own sex ed, because you can never assume what you're getting is comprehensive sexual education, says Judith Simsenden, MD, a board-certified gynecologist specializing in pediatric and adolescent gynecology at the Arnold Palmer Hospital in Orlando. Here are a few things you need to know, even if you're nowhere near feeling ready to do the deed. 1. It's normal to be interested in sex, or not. You're not weird if you're into it before your friends are, or if you literally could not care less about it. You decide when you want to be sexually active, Dr. Sim Senden says. Not your partner. Not your crew. You. 2. Sex isn't just, sex. In other words, it's not just vaginal intercourse, sexual activity includes just about any kind of intimate contact. That could be kissing on the lips, touching intimate parts of the body with the hands, mouth, or penis, or vaginal or anal penetration, says Sarah Yamaguchi, MD, an OB-GYN at Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles, CA. So when your doctor asks about your sexual history, any of the above is fair game. And it's important to be honest, so they can tell you how to stay healthy and protect yourself. 3. How you define virginity is totally your call. For some people, virginity has a cut and dry definition. For others, it's a flexible concept, and kind of a heteronormative term, TBH. Whatever rings true for yo you is fine. As far as your geno is concerned, what you're doing is more important than how you label it. We think of virginity as something that's really determined more by an individual and not by anybody else, Dr. Sim Senden says. It's not a medical diagnosis. For you can say no at any time. It's never too late to change your mind. You're literally inches away from doing the deed. You've done everything but. You said you were ready, but you're having second thoughts? You've already done it, but don't want to do it again? You had sex with your last bee, but want to hold off this time? Whatever your reason is, it's valid, and totally fine to say no. It is never too late to change your mind, Dr. Yamaguchi says. Consent can be given and withdrawn at any point. If your partner is upset, then they are not the right person. 5. The pill may not be the best BC for you. The pill is 99% effective against pregnancy if you use it perfectly, but most people don't. Under normal circumstances, it's actually CLOSIR to 91% effective, which sounds solid until you do the math and realize, OMG, that means around 1 in 10 pill users get Prego each year. If you're worried you won't remember to take it at the same time each day, Dr. Sims recommends asking your doctor about long-acting reversible contraceptives like birth control implants or the IUD instead. Just keep in mind that none of the above protect against sexually transmitted infections. 6. Condoms aren't foolproof. Condoms can help protect you from sexually transmitted infections like HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and high-risk HPV, but they're not fail-safe, and they don't protect against everything. Condoms are not effective at preventing the transmission of herpes or warts, since those lesions can happen on an area not covered by the condom, Dr. Yamaguchi says. That's why STI testing is super important if you're sexually active. 7. In many cases, STI testing can be totally confidential. Many STIs are treatable, but we need to know you have them, 
Dr. Sim Senden says. If you don't know you have them, they can cause long-term problems. Check your state's confidentiality laws, as long as you're over 13, you may be able to get tested without your doctor alerting your parents. 8. Your doctor should never judge you. Period. My patients all think they're going to ask me something shocking that I've never heard before, but I rarely hear a question that hasn't come up before, Dr. Yamaguchi says. We talk about vaginas and look at them all day. It may be an embarrassing area for you to discuss, but not for us. You should feel comfortable asking your Jino literally anything. If you get an unapproachable vibe from them, or they shade you for asking about your sexual health, it's time to find a new doc. 9. Masturbation is no biggie. It's not wrong, it's not weird, and it's not just for boys. It's okay to masturbate. Dr. Sim Senden says. Just because you're interested in sex, doesn't mean you have to have sex with somebody. You can make yourself happy. Masturbation never got anybody pregnant, never gave anyone an infection, and never dealt with relationship drama. 10. Sex should be enjoyable. If you are sexually active, it should be something you're doing for you, not just to make your partner happy. And while it's totally okay if you don't have an orgasm, it can take a while to figure out what works for you, it should at least be something you look forward to. If you're dreading it, don't do it, Dr. Sim Senden says. And if it's painful, talk to a doctor. 11. Your vagina doesn't look weird. We've said this before, but you can seriously stop stressing about what your vag looks like. Everybody's so different down there, Dr. Sim Senden says. It's a wide variety. And you're normal. 12. Porn isn't sex ed. Internet porn may seem like an easy way to get a lot of questions answered at once, sort of like a super NSFW video tutorial, but it's not exactly known for being realistic. Porn is as accurate about sex education as action movies are accurate about the real world, Dr. Yamaguchi says. Still, the internet can be a helpful resource for questions you're too embarrassed to ask anyone else, as long as you stick to reputable sites like Planned Parenthood or Bedsider. Or just talk to your Jino, did we mention they're really, really not judging? 13. Sex Ed should be inclusive. Even if your school has a sex ed program, it's likely geared towards straight, cisgender teens, and if that's not how you identify, you may feel like you're not getting the info you need. If that's the case, it can be super helpful to find an LGBTQ friendly doc who can answer any questions you still have. The bottom line is, go to a gynecologist you're comfortable with, Dr. Sim Senden says. If your doc seems clueless about LGBTQ and issues, look for a new one.